the next wave. What do you think of when you think of the next wave in the context of technology? Is it more technology? Is it more devices, as Amy mentioned? Or is it transforming the local community? Of course, the answer is both. Today, um, I'll talk about the latter and how advances in the former are making this possible. So uh, what is technology innovation? Is it a gift that keeps on giving? Or is it something that has not been invented yet? Is it zero to five billion mobile users over the last 25 years or so? Or is it the race to two billion internet users in a little over 15 years? Of course, technology innovation is all of these things, but it is much more than that. It is about taking this technology and impacting what is happening in communities around you in remote parts of the world. Today, uh, I'm delighted to share three stories, three stories where I have been part of um, the story, one way, shape, or form. The first one is in San Francisco, the Silicon Valley as we know it. Um, I'm happy to be a member of the board of the Community Technology Network. Essentially, what we do is we work with computer centers in the heart of the city, uh, in the good parts and the bad parts, and make them successful. One of the labs I'd like to spotlight today is the Tenderloin Technology Lab. Now, Tenderloin is the dark side of San Francisco. You know, uh, it was formed as a partnership between St. Anthony's and Network Ministries both of which have been around for 40 or 50 years. And, and they have a computer center, they have um, training rooms, they have one-on-one -on -one counseling, and so on. Who comes there? Right? Uh, people come there from halfway houses, just released from prisons. People come there from shelters. People may not have food to eat or a place to live, but they come there. Um, what do they do? They go to Facebook and Twitter. Um, a person, a gentleman, six or nine months ago, he was living in a shelter. He found his daughter on Facebook. Right? He does not have enough to eat, not a good place to live, but he uses Facebook to connect with his daughter. Uh, several people have found jobs uh, coming to this place. Many of them rely on welfare. And it's very funny because, you know, the welfare check comes end of the month. The beginning of the month, not many people show up. It goes like this. And as you go to the third week and fourth week, uh, the traffic increases because they have nothing else to do. Um, we, we did a quick survey. How comfortable do they feel about computers before coming in? and after uh, they have spent some time. In this chart, red is bad, green is good. What is really interesting is, on the bottom chart, the more they use computers, the more they are hooked on to it. And, and they want to use it again and again. Um, a few faces. The, the one I would highlight is Daryl. Daryl came to, to the lab about 18 months ago as a homeless person. Today, he's em employed there. He teaches a class about computer repair, and this is changing his life. So, first example of technology innovation um, is how um, the dark side of Silicon Valley is being touched. The second example comes from Intel. Um, at Intel, we have been pursuing a classmate PC um, I'll give you a couple of stories. First, in Bangladesh, uh, we have been working with info ladies. Info ladies, there are about 1,000 of them. We equip them with a classmate PC, a phone, and a camera. And they, then they, um, using their bikes, 
go to remote, remote villages to help people, maybe 13 or 15 a day. And, you know, essentially they bring your bank to you. They bring your hospital to you. They bring your post office to you. They connect you. They make a difference in the local community. Another example, in, in Uganda, where we have rented um, a few vans, and we have retrofitted the vans with, with solar panels. There are 20 or 25 classmate PCs inside these vans. This brings the school to you. This brings the library to you. Right? Uh, since its inception, we have trained over 1,000 teachers, 10,000 students. This is technology innovation. This is making a difference in, in where you live. The last example comes from India, where I grew up. Now, many of you might know India as the largest democracy in the world, um, billion two people. What you may not know is how heavily India relies on agriculture. Right? Um, roughly 900 million people call farming their occupation. A fourth of the nation's GDP depends on agriculture. Now, the PC penetration, the internet penetration is very low. Only 1 in 30 have access to a PC. Compared to the US, 70 or 80 percent. Um, that's a crime, right? Uh, but if you look at mobile penetration, it has shot off the roof. There are more than 600 million phones. That's one in two. And uh, there is no uh, slowing down. So uh, 10 years ago, the, uh, the government, um, in, in consultation with ITC, started this experiment, eChopal. Think of eChopal as eBay for farmers. Before eChopal, you had your produce, and you sold your produce to the person who, who shouted the loudest. Now with eChopal, you are actually trading. You're trading across India. In 10 years, there are 38,000 villages covered by each of PAL. There are 6,000 each of PALs. This is when PC and internet penetration is 7%. The good news is each of PAL is going mobile. Right? Imagine the impact this will have when every other person in India has access to this marketplace. So I'll leave you with how are you impacting your community? How are you impacting people uh, that I talked about? Thank you very much.